Good afternoon. Today is Monday, the 19th of April, 2021. So first of all, thank you to Dr. Bird or Dr. Apisamai for the Thai language uh, briefing just now. First of all, um, just to highlight one issue that Dr. Bird, Dr. Dr. Apisamai mentioned this now about the impending risk that medical personnel still face. Now, of course, with the year uh, gone by uh, after the first um, COVID case uh, in Thailand over a year now, medical personnel have continued to be uh, dedicating to this cause, to, to serving uh, the people in Thailand. Now, of course, the risk is that medical personnel in Thailand have also uh, been at risk themselves and been uh, facing risks uh, to their families as well. Um, as we can see by the number of uh, around 100 plus medical personnel who have had been affect, uh, infected with, with uh, COVID positive as well. So just to mention uh, first that we've been receiving some uh, comments on social media uh, regarding certain uh, issues that have not, uh, allegedly have not been uh, spoken about in, in briefings. Now I'd just like to clarify that we have touched upon many, many issues uh, through the daily briefings. If you view the briefing uh, only once, for example, if you view uh, my uh, recap today or, or yesterday, then it might not include all the issues, but in the past days, in the past weeks, uh, those issues might have been mentioned al already. So my advice is that uh, if you look, if you view the briefing on a daily basis, surely you would be able to see the whole picture of all the measures that we're doing, all the points that we would want to communicate with the audience. But if you view our briefing perhaps once a week or once a month, of course, there will be some issues that you might think that it's not addressed, but they have been addressed. So you can view the briefings from various social media uh, platforms. For example, uh, NBT Live uh, on Facebook, also Thai PBS Live on Facebook. Uh, these will have the Thai version followed by the English version in the same clip. But if you want the English version only, on a daily basis, the NNT or the National News Bureau of Thailand's Facebook page will have the English uh, clip uh, only uh, on a daily basis. The Facebook page of the Public Relations Department, uh, PR Thailand, will also have the English language version of the briefing on a daily basis as well. So if you want to look at the past uh, episodes, the past uh, briefings, you can, look at, you can view it from these uh, social media outlets to get the whole picture that we've been communicating on actually every important issue to, to you, be it uh, vaccines, be it hospital beds, be it the prospects ahead, the numbers, uh, foreign nationals, um, international uh, arrivals, and other many, many other measures, Article 9 of the emergency decree and, and the like. So all issues were, are, being, are being discussed on a daily basis. So I'll move first to the general situation that we have for today and the numbers recorded for today. We have new confirmed case at 1,390 cases. Out of that number, 1,058 cases are from local transmission. 326 from active case finding, which still continues, and six cases from the state quarantine system. The new recoveries is 104, which far lags behind the number of new confirmed cases. 104 uh, following versus 1,390. We have new, uh, three new fatalities recorded for today, unfortunately, and I'll go into some detail of that. The accumulated total of fatalities now stands at 104, as you see on screen. The 102nd fatality is a 56-year-old male who worked as a waiter in an entertainment venue in Bangkok, returning to Buri Ram during Songkran. He had symptoms like fatigue, shortness of bre breath, later passed away from heart failure. The 103rd fatality is an 84-year-old woman from Bangkok with pre-existing medical conditions of diabetes, coronary heart disease, and uh, terminal kidney disease. The woman came in close contact with her nephew who works at an entertainment venue in Bangkok who was later tested positive and she was undergoing di dialysis and passed away from hi hypertension. 
The 104th fatality is a 61-year-old woman who was a trader and resident of Prachuop, Kirikan province. She had pre-existing conditions as well, like diabetes, thyroid, and came into close contact with friends uh, during a meal, uh, who was later tested positive, and she herself was tested positive. Now, as mentioned in the previous days, young people at the working age are currently being affected by COVID because they go outside, uh, they travel a lot, very active in terms of their working uh, life. But the fatalities fall upon the elderly. The three uh, new cases of fatality that I mentioned that I detailed just now are actually from the elderly group, as you may notice, uh, aged 84, 61, and 56, for, for example. So the elderly group of our population uh, is being affected in terms of fatalities. Just to reiterate that practicing DMHTT, whether you are young or you are old, as well as re refraining from meeting uh, elderly people uh, in close proximity, would be very good in preventing uh, the infection to your loved ones. And in this regard, of course, we express our sincere condolences to the families of the new fatalities for today and the days past. So just some observations from the presentation of Dr. Bird, Dr. Apisamai, just, just now. She showed us a couple of uh, maps. She showed us a couple of maps uh, uh, about the cases in various provinces in, in Thailand. Now, you would know already that the number of cases have affected all provinces in Thailand, 76 provinces plus, plus Bangkok in Thailand already. Some provinces are in the, um, uh, how should I say, lighter stage, which is around one to 10 cases in the whole province. Some provinces in the mid range, which is 11 to 50, and some provinces in the high uh, range, which is 51 to 100 cases in that particular province. So from those maps that you saw on screen in the Thai version, we can say that the direction, however, of the cases in the various provinces, in some provinces, are actually uh, uh, on a downturn because many provinces have been able to implement their measures quite effectively. So for example, I'll just give some examples. Some provinces you saw on that map, it was color-coded. Some provinces started off first as the kind of like a, in a lighter situation, meaning one to 10 cases in that province. And then as the weeks went by, they, the cases increased in those provinces. So it became around ranging from 11 to 50 cases in that province. But come today, come this week or today, the number of cases in that particular province went down again to one to 10 in terms of the range. So many provinces have been seeing this downward uh, trend and the total number of cases for today is slightly lower than the one of the past days. Today's 1,300 plus. The past days we had 1,5 or 1,7, hoping that this trend will continue on a downward scale. Now, in terms of the consideration for the recategorization of provinces, as you know already, 18 provinces are in the red zone. The um, logic that we use, of course, is to look into the provinces which have the most occurrence of, of cases. If there are cases found in uh, particular provinces in an upward trend, in a stable trend, they are considered in the 18 provinces that we have recategorized re as being in the red provinces and as uh, put into the Article 9 of the emergency uh, decree and being implemented right, right now. Now, other agencies, I have to mention many other agencies involved in terms of building awareness and implementing measures uh, in the various provinces, in Bangkok as well. So, for example, the Ministry of Transportation has come up with various measures to be in line with the Article 9 uh, of the emergency decree in terms of the transportation and all the work under its uh, purview. In terms of the Ministry of Public Health uh, as well, the basis used in terms of all of this analysis is on the basis of uh, epidemiology, epidemiology. And as Dr. Apisamai had mentioned just now, we hope that in the next two weeks from now, the situation may get slightly better in terms of the cases of COVID 
because all of the measures that various line agencies have been implementing, all the measures that the provincial authorities have been implementing, and all the cooperation that we are receiving from you to date. So let's look forward to the next two weeks. The next two weeks, we may have a slightly different uh, or better situation, hopefully. Another issue that I'd like to mention, and which was touched upon in the Thai version as well, uh, is about the work of the Civil Aviation uh, Authority of Thailand, or CAT. So in the past weeks, especially during the Songkran week, and you see some images on screen there, the CAT, Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand, had been inspecting uh, the airports of Suwannapoom and Don Myung Airport in, in Bangkok to ensure that these airports are up to the standards that have been set. Of course, during Songkran, we had uh, discouraged uh, travel, but there were people traveling, of course, um, out of necessity or uh, because they wanted to travel to uh, various provinces, but of course with the very important measures uh, at hand. So the CAT, the authority there, had inspected various airports. In addition, I mentioned about this yesterday as well, that the CAAT had announced that landing of airplanes and operations, operational times of aircrafts would not be allowed between the times of 2300 hours to 0400 hours or 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning to discourage uh, movement uh, and travel during those, those times. Another interesting piece of information which was discussed in the daily CCSA meeting actually this morning and in the past days, and I, and I touched on this on the past days, was about the issue of the testings that various international schools uh, would have to be uh, uh, holding. Uh, for example, it might be the IB M21 uh, placement test, which is being held uh, in the same time as other countries, other schools uh, around, around the world, so meaning that it uh, cannot be moved. So the situation now is that international schools have also been affected by the COVID situation, the uh, COVID uh, infection, so which we uh, are quite worried about this. Now, the request to hold the uh, placement tests in international schools uh, is now in the process of uh, being uh, submitted, uh, proposed to be approved uh, by the uh, Prime Minister. So if the request to hold these examinations uh, still stand, uh, I can say that it is in the process of being approved by the Prime Minister. And of course, if approved, uh, the important uh, measures to prevent the spread of COVID has to be maintained. This is because in relation to Article 9 of the Emergency Decree, uh, 50 people and up, uh, gatherings of 50 people and up, be it meetings or placement tests, uh, are not allowed unless approved by the CCSA as a prevention measure for, for COVID. But of course, these examinations, since it's being held, it would, it would be held in the same time as other countries around the world. It's standardized, we understand that. And it might not uh, be, we might not be able to postpone it, uh, so to speak. So if the request uh, to hold still stands, uh, our answer is that it's in the process of being approved. So please stay tuned for that. The duration, I've learned, is the duration of the examinations around the world for all international schools is uh, the 20th of April to the 30th of, of June. That's the uh, entire duration. It, perhaps it depends on the country or international school uh, system as well. So, just additional information about masks, uh, ensuring the sufficient supply of masks during this uh, wave. The government uh, deputy spokesperson uh, said that the government is making efforts to ensure that there are, efficient, there are efficient face masks for medical staffs and citizens, along with other medical supplies, and the capacity to produce face masks at around 63 factories nationwide is now around four to five million pieces per day for the past three months. Additional point, and I believe we'll be having some infographics 
a couple of infographics up uh, there on screen. Just additional points before I end. So as we continue to fight uh, against COVID, some key measures to adopt and to remind uh, are as follows. You can see that on screen, wearing masks, num reducing number of daily activities. As you know, work from home is encouraged to the maximum degree for government agencies as well as other uh, private uh, companies as well. Uh, three, reduce the traveling, movement, reduce social gatherings, uh, according to the regulation, not over 50 people, as I mentioned, avoid physical contact. And lastly, PPP, public-private people partnership is the ultimate success formula, which a case in point is Thailand. We've been receiving a lot of cooperation, very good cooperation from the private sector. If you look in the news, the Thailand Retailers Association has um, cooperated well with the government and the CCSA, uh, closing department stores in the times that we requested them to, uh, at 9 p.m. in the red zones and, and the like. Another infographic that I'd have, to you, uh, have, to you on, have for you on screen is from the World Health Organization. There, you see there on, on screen. Basically, if you have friends or family who are not well or in hospital right now, the best way to wish them, aside from perhaps once in a while, um, take care and go to visit them, but, but not all the time, because I guess the point is not to have too frequent contact with patients who have less, a, less, a lesser degree of immunity, um, be more frail, especially if they are the, the elderly. So, so if these friends or family of yours are admitted to the hospital, one way to offer them more support and wishing them well is not to visit them quite too often, but to wish them the best of health, to get well soon on online or on social media, on, on video conference, on, on, on Zoom. So that's the suggestion of the World Health Organization. So for today, this is the information that I have. Um, I hope that you will be making use of the information that we provide every day. And as I mentioned in the beginning, you can see the past uh, clips, the past episodes, the recap of the days past in the social media platforms that I have mentioned. And if there are any inquiries or any concerns that the English language community might be uh, having about the various measures so far, uh, please send it to us on our social media um, platforms, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the CCSA, the Ministry of Public Health, and rest assured it will uh, get to us and we'll try to address that to you as soon as, as possible. So thank you very much. Have a very good week ahead. Sorry, Krab. ขอบคุณนะครับท่านนัทธพานุนพคุณนะครับรองเทพดีกรมสารานิเทศและรองโฆษกกระทรวงการต่างประเทศนะครับและทั้งหมดคือการแถลงข่าวจากสบคในช่